Okay, so it seems that we are not getting a lot of information about the amount of devastation caused by Hurricane Sandy. And unfortunately, I have to report to the people of the United States that the Australian media is pretty much ignoring the situation over on the east coast of the states. In fact, the only bit of information I have seen is on the bottom of the screen and it's really in regards to Wall Street and how trading has been a little bit shaky and a bit about how Barack Obama has been visiting these communities and pledging to rebuild. Other than that, there really is not a lot of information to be found. Now, when you compare this to last year after the Japanese earthquake and tsunami, you can see that there is a huge difference in the amount of information that we are receiving. I remember that after the Japanese earthquake and tsunami, we had days of 24-hour coverage on the impact that the earthquake and tsunami caused to Japan. However, it seems that the people of the United States are not worth that to their government because their plight is pretty much going unnoticed by others around the world due to a lack of news coverage. Now, these photos were posted on Facebook last night and I have been gathering the photos and collecting them and I've put them together in a photo album. Now, the reason that I included the tsunami is because my feelings are that this is when it all began. The Charlotte Islands earthquake was really the beginning of this huge shift that we have just experienced on our planet. And it's not only our planet that has gone through this shift, we have also experienced these sh shifts. And if you're paying attention, you would have definitely felt that things now seem like they are more surreal and more amplified. And I think that we are going to experience a lot more events happening in shorter amounts of time because we are moving down a Fibonacci spiral towards singularity and so time is constraining and events are going to start happening closer together and this is going to start really feeling very intense for people that aren't aware of what is happening. This is why it is so important to find peace within and remain connected because as soon as we start looking outside of ourselves and to other people for answers, we start to disempower ourselves and lose our centre of balance. So we've got to bring it back to ourselves and we've got to understand it's up to us to keep ourselves in balance and move to a state of feeling peace. You know, we want to prepare ourselves for feeling peace before these events happen, not during these events because it's going to be difficult, if not possible, to, to find that state of peace within and to you know, move yourself beyond the panic and the fear. And when I say fear, I'm not meaning the fear that instinctively allows you to make decisions when your life is in danger. I'm talking just the blind fear, the panic that people feel because they are not able to process the information they are seeing or what they are experiencing. And that is not a place that you really want to be. So as you can see, there is a lot of devastation. Now, the Staten Island Ferry, I'm sorry, that is not going to be up and running for weeks. You know, you've got to understand that there is now no water, no electricity. I mean, how are they going to rewire these entire communities? There's gas lines all under there. These people have nowhere to live. They have no food. As I said, they have no fresh water. Uh, they have no belongings. 
no clothes. You know, I'm talking about the people that have lost everything, the devastation that we're seeing now. These are the people that are going to require the most amount of support. And I think that you'll see that the government are going to be lacking, just like they were after Katrina. The only difference with Katrina is that it was the South. And the poor people really didn't have a voice. Now we're dealing with the top end of town. And we're dealing with people that have a sense of entitlement. And so when they start experiencing this lack of support, then they are going to start getting very upset. And at the moment, we are not seeing a lot of information because I think that the government really don't even know where to start. There is that much devastation. Now, let's not forget that in the water, there is also going to be a lot of toxins, including sewerage. And you can imagine how old some of those sewers are underneath New York and how full of bacteria and very dangerous microbes that are now being released all throughout the water. So you can expect within the next week probably outbreaks of cholera and other diseases. And we also have people now that have to line up for water and food. Now remember when I said that you don't want to be one of these people that have to go to FEMA, that have to line up for the water. And unfortunately, this is what the outcome is when people rely on their government, when people do not empower themselves, when people separate themselves from each other and don't pay attention. And it's really unfortunate that we're going to see more of this. And it's really going to be up to each other to help each other, just like this shelter that is helping people with food. That's what this picture was actually about, but when I saw it, I just straight away realized this is exactly what I've been speaking about when I've been telling people that when the shit hits the fan, you do not want to be down in the cities fighting amongst everyone else for your piece of bread and your you know, bottle of water, and this is exactly what we're going to be seeing. Because as I said, there's no running water in a lot of these communities, there's no electricity, there's uh, gas pipes that are ruptured, there are toxins in the water. There are, you know, there's no shops trading at all. And, you know, these people are going to start realizing just how difficult and challenging this situation is going to be within the next months. I cannot see these places being rebuilt for a very, very long time. And you know, I saw this other article and it was in regards to these homeowners here do not have insurance because the insurance, well, if they have insurance, the insurance doesn't cover flood. It may cover theft, it may cover fire, but it doesn't cover flood. So therefore, all these people that have lost their homes have no way of replacing their homes. Now, in this article, it actually stated that Fannie Mae and Freddie Max have said that they will help homeowners with new loans. That's the best these people can do. The U.S. citizen has bailed out these banks, and now that the U.S. citizen needs help and support, the banks are going to profit from that as well. And these people that have to take new loans will also be paying off their last mortgage. That doesn't just magically disappear. So I can tell you now that a lot of these people are going to be destitute. They have lost everything. Now, the other situation I think that we do need to pay attention to is the nuclear situation because I find it really hard to believe that when we're seeing all this devastation and we're seeing how much the water has just came through and basically ripped out everything, you know, just smashed it to pieces. And they're saying that the Indian Point nuclear facility didn't really have any flooding. Even though when I looked at where it was positioned, I find it almost impossible that it couldn't have experienced some flooding. 
Now, I'm not going to say that there will be nuclear events, but I am going to tell you that one of the issues with nuclear power is that even if they can keep the backup generators going and they can cool the rods, the nuclear power plants continue to make electricity. And that electricity needs to go somewhere. And with no grids in place anymore because all of the power lines have been totally devastated, then that's going to start causing problems for these plants. Now, I don't know enough about you know, the nuclear industry to really make any determination, but I do know that I think when we're looking at this amount of devastation, that it has to be factored in. Now, I mean, when you look at this carnage, you can understand that this is all sand, guys. The sand has basically just washed up and into and embedded these buildings. You know, there is so much devastation here. I am really finding it hard to fathom that nobody is really reporting on this 24 hours a day and what is going on. And I think you are going to continue to see this type of coverage basically very limited. And when there is coverage, it's always focusing on Obama and how great he is doing and how he's surveying the New Jersey area and he's, you know, hugging people and telling them that we'll rebuild. Really, Obama? What are you going to rebuild with? You're already in debt up to your eyeballs. You've got the Fed printing off $30 billion a month just to keep yourselves treading water, and now you're going to have to somehow help these people with bricks and mortar. This isn't just about materializing money out of anywhere. This is really reality. This is physical matter that has to be created and paid for. And that's not going to be so easy as just manipulating stock markets and making money appear from nowhere. We have people's lives that have been really affected. So let's remember that these people are all going to experience a lot of psychological issues. Uh, at the moment, they're in a stage of numbness and disbelief. It hasn't really set in. Within the next couple of weeks, they're going to move into anger and depression and we're going to see a lot of issues. I believe that this storm has the potential to change everything on our planet. It also has the potential to create a massive amount of people waking up to the real reality of the situation and how the government has let them down and how the government really don't care for the people. They only care about staying in power and money. And we can see that by these banks coming out and saying that they're going to help these homeowners with new loans. You know, where's the compassion? Where is the compassion? So I find it interesting. We are now seeing this amount of devastation in polarity. We've had it happen to the poor people down in New Orleans and we saw the outcome of that and now we've seen the polarity of that being that the rich side of town has now been impacted by the fury of Mother Earth. Now lastly, I'm going to address the issue of this storm being man-made and I'm not going to get into any discussions regarding that because quite frankly I don't see how it's relevant. Even if this storm was man-made, how is that relevant now? Think about it, guys. Before you start sharing information and basically focusing on situations that you have no control about, ask yourself how that's benefiting you in this time when you really need to be going within, as I said, finding that peace and understanding that it's time to prepare. Everything's about to change, guys. The gears have just shifted up a notch and we are going to start feeling this on every level. So, as I said, stay centred and stay at peace and uh, look out for each other, guys. Really, this is all we have is each other. Okay, well, I'll leave it there and as always, peace out.